Well, welcome to another midweek message from Myerstown Church of the Brethren. I'm Pastor Dennis, and this message is for Wednesday, November 4th, 2020. This week's midweek message begins a four-part series focusing on the Old Testament book of Habakkuk. And my guess is this is a, a book of the Old Testament that you don't have on the top of your Bible reading list. But I challenge you to move it up a notch or two for several weeks because Habakkuk has a lot to say to us contemporary Christians. The issues which the prophet confronts are not that much different from what we experience. And what he learns about God can help us as we navigate through this messy world today. Let me read a few verses for you from chapter 1 and chapter 2. These are verses 1 through 4 of chapter 1. The prophecy that Habakkuk the prophet received. How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen, or cry out to you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed, and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous, so that justice is perverted. And skipping down to the first verse of chapter 2. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. I think it would be helpful for you if you would turn to your own Bible and read all of Habakkuk 1 through verse 1 of chapter 2 before you continue on. Well, as often is the case when we study scripture, it's helpful to know a little bit about the climate of the times in which it is being written. Habakkuk was written just prior to the invasion of the Babylons into Judah and the subsequent exile of the Israelites to Babylon. This would place its writing in the late seventh to early sixth centuries BCE and place Habakkuk as a contemporary of Jeremiah, Daniel, and Ezekiel. Saddened by the con corruption and violence he saw around him, Habakkuk poured out his heart to God. Yet, as you read those first verses in Habakkuk chapter 1, it seems as if the prophet could easily be speaking about life today. Violence, injustice, wrong, destruction, strife, conflict. The law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. Well, as did Habakkuk, we also can find ourselves crying out, How long, O Lord, must we call for help, but you do not listen? Like Habakkuk, we grow weary, weary in our praying, weary in actions that seem to make little difference. Like Habakkuk, we ask similar questions. God, are you listening? Don't you see what's happening? We ask how and why and when, and we search for answers, satisfying answers. But not all questions come with neat and satisfying answers. And the more questions we ask, and the fewer satisfying answers we receive, the more fearful we become. And fear leads to doubts. Is God really listening? Is God really in control? Is God really there? Because if God is, it surely shouldn't be this way, should it? In his introduction to Habakkuk in the message, Eugene Peterson writes this. He says, most prophets speak God's word to us. They are preachers calling us to listen to God's words of judgment and salvation, confrontation and comfort. They face us with God as he is, not as we imagine him to be. Most prophets are in your face assertive, not given to tact, not diplomatic, as they insist that we pay attention to God. But Habakkuk speaks our word to God. He gives voice to our bewilderment, articulates our puzzled attempts to make sense of things, faces God with our disappointment with God. He insists that God pay attention to us, and he insists with a prophet's characteristic, no-nonsense bluntness. This prophet who stands at our side, waits and listens, and it is in his waiting and listening, which then turns into praying, that he found himself inhabiting the large world of God's sovereignty. 
Habakkuk started out exactly where we start with our puzzled complaints and God accusations, but he didn't stay there. Habakkuk says, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I'm going to give to this complaint. He wasn't willing to settle for easy answers. He wasn't willing to passively accept the situation. So he climbed up to his watchtower to wait and see what God had to say and how God would answer his complaint. He had a choice. Habakkuk could choose to grow better by pursuing answers to his questions, or he could choose to grow bitter and walk away from God for all appearances, who, was, who for all appearances was abandoning his people to the ruthless Babylonians. We have a similar choice. When what we are experiencing in life makes no sense to us, when it seems like God has abandoned us, when we're full of difficult gut-wrenching questions, we can choose to grow better by pursuing God and the answers to our questions, or we can choose to grow bitter and walk away from God. It is through choosing to grow better that God reveals himself to us and can train us for living as people of faith in this messy world. Pastor and author John Piper observes that there is a restful side to the Christian life and a wrestling side. To the Christian life. We certainly prefer the restful side, but to get to that restful side, more often than not, we have to go through the wrestling and the struggling side. In Genesis 32 is found the story of the patriarch, patriarch Jacob wrestling with God. It was through wrestling with God, with struggling with God, that Jacob saw God. And that is what Habakkuk was doing as well. He was wrestling with God. He refused to grow bitter and chose to grow better by confronting God with his questions. And he persisted in waiting for God to answer. Habakkuk's experience affirms that honesty and openness before God expressed in the most profound questions, even doubts, are not out of bounds. In fact, Jacob's and Habakkuk's experience tells that if we don't wrestle and struggle with God, we'll never truly see and know God. And it is here that we gain one of the most important lessons from the book of Habakkuk, that our questions, that our struggle with God is one of the most profound expressions of our faith in God, and maybe one of the highest forms of worship because our questions express that we are willing to take our relationship with God seriously. In verse 12, Habakkuk addresses God, O oh Lord, my God, my Holy One, my Rock. Habakkuk acknowledged that even though he didn't understand, God was still God. God was his God. In spite of his lack of understanding, he still had faith. He still honored and worshiped God, his rock. He makes the choice to not walk away in bitterness, but to wait for God's answers that he might grow better as God reveals to him more about God, God's will and God's ways. Knowing that we have the freedom to ask God the difficult questions, opens our hearts and minds to a new vision, to a new way of seeing, and a new way of understanding God. It's in waiting patiently for God's answers that we open ourselves to experiencing God's righteousness and peace. When things happen in your life that you just don't understand, when you're full of questions for God, will you choose to grow bitter, and walk away from the one who has the answers? Or will you choose to grow better and bring your doubts, fears, and questions to God, waiting patiently for God to answer? My prayer is that you'll choose to grow better, not bitter, that you may find rest in God's love and care. Would you pray with me? 
God in our world and in our lives, like Habakkuk, we don't always understand why things happen the way they do. When life doesn't make sense to us, help us to choose to grow better as we come to you for answers to those questions deepest in our souls. May we find our rest in you. In Christ's name, amen. God bless. I hope to see you on Sunday morning.